I landed an internship at NASA this, this summer at Glenn Research Center and we're doing human reliability analysis. I went to one of my professor's talks. She was talking about ML research that it is being used at Glenn. So this is Adam Kurth. He's a math and statistics graduate student at Arizona State University. And in today's interview, I go over exactly how he got this job at NASA and some of the other cool opportunities he's had as a math and stats graduate student. So you're gonna wanna stick around because he has some great tips for both math and statistics majors as well as how he was able to get these opportunities for himself. I saw in the original message you sent me that you were a kind of math and statistics major. How did you get into that? So eventually, when I graduated high school, I had a 2.6 GPA. Um, so my dad told me eventually, he just really wanted me to succeed. And so I tried out his advice and he said, just do math and stats. And so I tried it, I eventually, learn from the ground up algebra to calculus three and onwards. And, uh, I put my all into it and I just made that my, my, what I did in my free time and really how I got into it. And I eventually started loving it. Yeah. So with your, with your math and statistics background, uh, what kind of classes are you taking now? I think you're, you said you're a senior, correct? Yeah, I'm a senior. Uh, I took one graduate course in, uh, regression analysis. And then now I'm taking one in uh, deep learning and then I've taken numerical, I'm taking image processing, uh, like a lot of math stuff. Um, I'm also taking a course in estimation and, um, more like mathematical statistics. It's basically inference. So yeah, that's what I'm taking. Um, I'm taking one in biostats this summer as well. So that'll be cool. Yeah. Yeah, and I know a lot of people watching this probably, I mean, like a lot of people on the channel are either statistics majors, thinking about being a statistics major. So mm -hmm. from your major, like what was the hardest statistics classes you had to take? What was the hardest math classes you had to take? And do you think that's kind of typical of the major that you're in? Or was it more so that you're yeah. on that accelerated master's track that, you know, kind of puts those hard, harder classes into there, I should say? I think if you do a math, math focus and then stats like, like mine was, it was kind of blended together. Yep. My hardest class was by far advanced calculus, uh, basically baby analysis. And that was required for the masters as well as anything else I wanted to do. So it was a matter of taking that class. That was my hardest for sure. It was like proofs and all that. My hardest stats class, I haven't really had a whole hard load of stats classes before. Um, so I'm going to say my hardest is the inference class that I'm in mathematical statistics. So as of right now, um, I am doing research at biodesign Institute, um, specifically at the laser accelerator that we have, it's called CXFL. So I'm working with image pro image data. And so in crystallography, we have lots of image results, which are basically diffraction of like photons in a crystal sample and all that. Um, so I analyze like batches of images and each image is like huge, like file size. And so with that, I have to generate like these Python programs that actually do what we need. And, and one of them is, so yeah, I just do various research on that. It's very image process based. Um, yeah, I, I, I learned how to code pretty much on the job. Well, hey guys, and real quick, check out the links in the description. There's some resources there that I think will help you learn coding on your own. And if you end up purchasing anything that directly helps out the channel. So I appreciate it as well. But now back to the interview with Adam. And one of your questions was like, is it, what should you learn first? And then what was learned on the job? And I said the math, for me, at least the math was learned first and the programming was all secondary, all of it. Like I learned all of it on the job. So I was like looking up like, you know, like, uh, Python libraries, like how to use them and all that. Um, so yeah, so yeah, I do crystallography image research and I'm actually doing my masters in that, uh, specifically for a problem where the water in the sample, it diffracts in a predictable way. It's like a water ring. And so, uh, yeah, that's what I do a little bit for work. So that sounds to me insanely complicated, at least this the crystallography part of it. Um, 
I I'm not a physics just, major. <laughs> no, fair enough, fair enough. But it was interesting that you said the the coding part or programming part came after the math part. Um, yeah. Because typically, like, I mean, not typically, but for me at least, the only way I was getting a job in data analysis was like having some kind of personal projects or some kind of experience in specific tools that kind of helped get my foot in the door. For me, it was R. I got into like a software testing role, yeah. which got me into like an analyst role. How did you get into this role without having the program background? Like, how did that process go from application to interview without having the programming background when that's kind of what, what you're using on your day to day? Right. Um, so I did, I, I did do want to preface that I did have two courses in Java. So I wasn't unaware of the programming. I just was like reluctant. And so I, you know, it was more of, will you learn Python? And it was like, yes, I need to. Then while I was recovering from some health stuff, I learned Python and the math. And so I knew that would be important going further. Um, and then I learned Python, I learned basic Python. And then it was like super basic. Like, what is a JSON file? I'm like, what is a, what is a function? What is a class? Like all that. And then, and then I basically learned it like a steep, steep learning curve uh, from then on when I got hired here at the lab. So yeah, um, from application to, so my mom actually got me in the door. This is actually Great. hilarious. Have some connection. She works in PR. <laughs> she works in PR for the Biodesign Institute. And so I just said, hey, I need a job. And I was talking to her about it. And she said, let me see what I can do and kind of just set my application. And so here I am. That's um, awesome, dude. Yeah, I mean, get it how you can, I guess. <laughs> exactly. So I like do want to say, I do want to say that uh, connections are everything, uh, and not just my mom. Like, I had one of my math professors I took numerical analysis with. Uh, I went to one of her seminar talks this semester. I landed an internship at NASA this this summer at Glenn Research Center, and we're doing human reliability analysis. Like I told you. Um, but yeah. That was all through my professor, just going to one talk. Exactly. And I mean, I, I feel like a lot of people like don't, don't even, that doesn't even cross their mind. Like, they feel like yeah. they go to LinkedIn and like apply to jobs in there just go into the pool no. with all the other people, man. It's like those There's connections. Too many people. And like, too many people you're spending LinkedIn. so much money at college, right? Like use it to your benefit. I mean, so before that, before you applied to um, the job that your mom works at the company, was there like any... Anything you did prior to that, trying to find an internship and in, in data? I applied to like every internship under the sun, but it wasn't like I had any marketable skills at the moment. It was just like, I know I've taken two Java courses and I know Calc 3. That's where I was at. Okay. Um, like there was not much connection. Um, so in data, there wasn't much. I worked, you know, like at Oregano's, like this Italian restaurant. Right. Like that was, that sucked. <laughs> so it's, it's really just the connections that got me the job. And yeah, I mean, I it's a similar story for me. A math professor got me into my research position. The research position, I learned a lot of coding on the job. And so, I mean, I feel like that's the yep. way to go. Uh, anybody listening to this, I think that that's yeah. something to take away from that. But so, tell me a little bit more about this this NASA gig that you got coming up this summer. That sounds awesome. So I went to, like I said, I went to one of my professors' talks. I just. She was talking about ML research that is being used at Glenn and a presentation about how radiation exposure by the space travel. And so just, yeah, just based on the prolonged ex exposure to, um, you know, different harmful types of radiation. And they tested this on rat very well. And then they labeled, they created like some labeling of, of what was deemed a rat or a mouse affected by it. And then they basically generated tons of statistics off of that. I don't remember what the ML strategies they used. Um, but so during my interview, they said, yeah, you're basically going to be generating like code for astronaut health and say exercise, sleep, like eating, uh, and also like probably like reliability metrics, I would assume. So I really haven't had a ton of information about it, but it was a, a mathematician, two mathematicians hired. And so, yeah, one was a contractor and the other works for NASA. So 
Yeah. That's awesome. Um, I really don't know much else. <laughs> so when you say reliability, you mean just like whatever's affecting those mice and rats trying mm -hmm. to determine how that's going to affect human beings. Right. And using yeah, we're trying to extrapolate to, to humans. Yeah. And so how much machine learning do you do in your current role? Like, would you say? Right now we're, t okay, so in the, so we have this final project for deep learning, the class that I'm in. Okay. And we're generating something that's going to be used for the beam line, the commissioning of the beam line of our laser. And so when the scientists sit down right next to you and want like images of their data and stuff like that, they say, well, tell me where the peaks are of the image. And so we get the peaks and then we can estimate the interaction distance of the sample and laser and uh, detector actually. So sample detector, and that's like a diffraction pattern on the detector. And then, so that's an unknown variable. And with the water problem, we would want to estimate what type of, what uh, photon energy and what interaction distance there is. So those are two parameters we need to account for. And then we need to like actually diagnose as to what protein this is. So that's a whole nother problem. That's super complicated. Uh, but we're using convolutional nets like ResNets, basic CNNs, and that type of stuff to like extract the features of the images that we're processing. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's a little bit about w what I'm doing in and, uh, research. And so it sounds like there, there's at least some overlap in the current role that you're, you're able to leverage during that interview. So what kind of questions are they asking you in the interview out of curiosity? Which interview? So in the interview for NASA about, um, you know, whatever machine learning techniques they plan on using, mm. Um, mm. how are they, how are they going about interviewing you for that? Are they giving you technical questions? Are they kind of asking you what you've done, what you've applied? Yeah. They basically said, do you know what type of rigorous math, you know, because they're mathematicians, they said, what type of rigorous math, you know? And I said, okay, well, I've had like a rudimentary course in analysis. And then they're like, oh, okay. Yeah. You're cool. And you can write software too. Right. And I was like, yeah. And then they're like, oh, okay. It was pretty support. much it. Wow. So they knew I can write code in Python and that's all that they use. Um, right. And then they knew the educational background. They knew I was in statistics and they were mathematicians. So they knew that that was different that they didn't know about. And so, yeah, there wasn't really tons of specific questions. It was more like, will you, do you have a track record of producing software? If yes, then you're chill. It, it was really super Math calm. mathematical background. Yeah. 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 So for somebody who wants to do something similar to this, what do you think? What do you think their direction they should go is get that experience or try to pick up, you know, self teaching or try to take classes more geared towards that? What do you think the best way to go about it is? I think, I think that you should probably self study as much as you can just to fill the holes in your knowledge. But when you're in courses like in fall and spring semesters, you should take theoretical math classes because that is irreplaceable. If you take a course in analysis, you're going to be miles ahead of everyone. They're like programming is, I think it's just going to be phased out and we're just going to be like with the AI yeah. and stuff. So I think that theoretical math is like critical thinking and coding is on its way out. Like even for me, like I notice, you know, chat being used a lot. Um, even the so, company I work yeah, at, I mean, they're building their own chat bot to use because uh, we're not allowed to use the others for right. patient security concerns, but, um, exactly. Yeah. That's interesting because I mean, I, I did not really go down that route. I did it like applied and a lot of it was more so, you know, using R to do, um, different mm -hmm. statistical techniques. We were doing hypothesis testing. We did a little bit of data analysis. There was more of a hands-on approach. Um, I think it's definitely important to get some of the theory behind it as well. Yeah, absolutely. I think the theory is irreplaceable, to be honest. And I wish I took more theoretical math classes yeah. instead of focusing I mean, on In hindsight, yeah, theory. I definitely do as well. So I think hey, it's I'm okay. It's okay. <laughs> I'm chilling for now. I just wanted to say I have another research position. It's mainly in uh, item response theory. And so that's basically like you give a test to kids and they fill it out and we analyze the difficulty 
the discrimination, like all that. And discrimination means how hard the question is. Um, so we estimate we're running simulations or Monte Carlo simulations, and I'm just generating some software in R to run those simulations and kind of write out a report as to like what's happening. And, um, yeah, so yeah, that's also something I, I do. And so is that just but, kind of used to de develop tests for children that are compatible with what their skill level should be? Is that kind of the, the main reason behind that? Well, the study is a, of the, like of the software itself. So R has a package called MERT, multiple item response theory. There's also one called Flex Mert, which is its own private software. So we're trying to estimate based on the same data, different parameters and why, why they differ and how they, much they differ. And that's kind of the study. Um, so it's like a meta study, I guess. <laughs> and so is that going directly well, back um, to the, the package owner? Uh, I think it's just a, a practice for statisticians in the psych field. It's like, yeah, just, just being aware of like what, what estimates you should expect. That's super interesting. What is your, you know, goal with these research positions? It sounds like you're taking on an advanced degree. Where do you want to go from there? Um, so what I want to do is I want to get into research in some position. I don't know whether I want to go to industry or academia. I'm leaning toward the industry because I want to work on the, like the software side or the research side of like what we're doing with like whatever I want to do, I think it, I, what I want to do is um, cancer research and like prediction um, because I've had a personal experience with cancer. And so that's like motivation itself. But with an advanced degree, I, I'm, I'm shooting for a doctorate. I mean, who knows, but um, probably in biostatistics. So I have like that research background and these research roles are just for me to get like different experiences. So like different internship of like writing code for somebody or different, you know, simulation study or whatever. I think that it's just good to like broaden. And of course, like time is a factor too. Like if you can't, then don't, but, um, I'm always strapped for time now, but the goal is just to get ex more experience. And so if, if my, if your professor, like reach out to them and say, Hey man, like what do you need done? If anything, and then they're more likely to take you up on that offer and give you some experience. Uh, I think that that's probably a good tip of advice for viewers. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's, that's what the goal is.